There have been more opportunities for indigenous creators in Hollywood, on screen and behind the scenes. ABC's Deborah Roberts has more on the progress when it comes to representation in pop culture. We could be in California as soon as two months. If you've watched much television lately, you've probably noticed new faces and storylines. From this summer's Prey, featuring a majority indigenous cast and crew, to Reservation Dogs, a humorous take on reservation life. You're good thieves, best in town. Oh, thank you. It is a small town. The critically acclaimed show just renewed for a third season and opening doors to indigenous representation. We're giving children a chance to see themselves on screen. I can see it myself at being at this age that it's changing my perspectives and I can just only imagine what it's like for the younger generation to see that. Devry Jacobs, starring as Alora, is one of its breakout stars. Being a part of a show like Reservation Dogs where it's by indigenous people and it's for indigenous people and it's so fueled with a love for our communities and there's no explaining or spoon feeding to non-native audiences. Now, gracing magazine covers, she's even been named one of Time Magazine's 100 Next Most Influential Artists. <laughs> even writing an episode of Reservation Dogs. Cheese, did you want to say the blessing? Drawing on her childhood in the Ganawege Mohawk oh, Territory. You have said that you've almost got to find humor in the pain of the life that so many of these people live. Why is humor important in this story? I feel like humor is the glue that's kept our communities together. And if you think about it, like indigenous folk have already been through genocide of our communities and, and what's left for us is to celebrate ourselves and to lean on our community. And when there's nothing left to do, you kind of have to laugh it off. We ask you to bless this food and the people that cooked it. Our friend Delora here, as her grandma transcends into that place in the great beyond, in a galaxy far, far away. <clears throat> it's major progress since 2019, when Native Americans barely accounted for 1% of acting or staff writing jobs in Hollywood. We've been doing this for thousands of years. We're storytellers, and it's finally just happening that Hollywood's catching on to it and seeing the vast, rich stories that we do have. And joining me now from my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio, is Robin Pease. She is the Artistic Director of Culture Kids. It's a nonprofit organization dedicated to enhancing arts and cultural awareness for kids. And she's a graduate of the Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. Thank you for joining us. How are you today, Robin? I'm doing very well. Good Thanks for having you. me. Good to see you. So as Azan uh, McLaren mentioned, uh, part of indigenous culture is storytelling. Can you talk yes. about the significance of that art form? Storytelling, that's what I do. I am a Native American storyteller, but um, I just want to say that I do not speak for all Native people. I can only speak for myself and what I learned as a child and what I believe. Um, and all Indigenous people don't necessarily believe the same thing because there are so many different nations. But I personally think that Indigenous and all storytelling is a cool way of communicating. Now, some Native Americans have communicated through the ages using rituals, dance, songs, pictographs, stories. And since I'm a storyteller, actually, we all are storytellers because there are stories stories in everything, whether we're talking to our friends or on the phone, texting, whatever, stories are everywhere. And in Native culture, stories were often passed from person to person over time and over many years. Well, this, of course, is the oral tradition, and this is how knowledge, history, spiritual beliefs, culture has been shared throughout time. And these stories, these legends, these folk tales, these fables, they often recounted the history of the people, telling where we came from, or related adventures of particular heroes, or to educate children about cultural morals and values. And that's what I do. The stories that I tell fall in this um, area educating children about a good way to live their lives. Mm. I remember when I was little, my parents always used to tell me a story and at the end they'd say, what's the moral of the story, Robin? And um, 
So the stories that I tell today as a tribute to my family always have some sort of moral or lesson. The themes that I deal with are like taking care of Mother Earth, cheating does not pay, the power of words, the benefits of working together. And when I tell stories, I share these stories in a participatory way so that the audience has to join in the telling of the tale. I found that when they join in, it makes them more likely to take the moral and have it a part of them. When you tell them a story, that story lives in their hearts forever. Robin, let me ask you, um, uh, Robert, uh, Deborah Roberts just gave us a wonderful story about indigenous people in pop culture. Do you feel that there's more representation of indigenous people in, in, in pop culture? And do you think it, it it's advancing the way Native Americans are seen and understood? Oh, that's a tricky question. <laughs> There's more than there used to be, but okay. I still don't think that, um, you know, I don't enough. think, no, I think that it's hardly any, you know, yeah. and also the fact that this is Native American Heritage Month, it's like, why do we just have to celebrate it at Thanksgiving time? Because a lot of Native Americans don't celebrate Thanksgiving. It's our national day of mourning. Yes, especially talk about that, because that seems to be a real kind of, interesting designation of this period as Native American Heritage Month. To your point, and many Native people yes. don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Well, since 1970, indigenous people and their allies have gathered at noon on Coles Hill in Plymouth to commemorate a national day of mourning. And um, many Native people don't celebrate the arrival of the pilgrims and the European settlers because Thanksgiving Day, it's a reminder of of the genocide of, of native people and the theft of native lands and erasure of native culture. So, um, you know, if you're in the Boston area, this happens on November 24th at 12 noon. That's when the native people gather, the Where? native people, the indigenous at, in Plymouth at Coles okay. Hill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, mm -hmm. you know, that's where they, they, they go. I, I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. I prefer to celebrate the harvest, you know, and that this is the end of the growing season where I live. And, um, you know, I, I, I pre I'd rather celebrate taking care of Mother Earth mm. and thinking about that. Than so what do you think about the concept of a Native American Heritage Month? Well, uh, it's like just Black History that... Month and Asian American History Month, right? Oh, it should be I know. celebrated all the time. We... Why, yes, why do we just have to celebrate it at a particular time? I mean, you know, we live in America and what's our motto? What's the motto of our country? One of the mottos is e pluribus unum, out of many, you know, we're one America, but we're, you know, we're a salad. We're lots of different different people and different cultures. And mm -hmm. I personally like to celebrate all cultures. I grew up in New York City and, you know, where I grew up, there were so many different cultures and, and the people celebrated. We celebrated everybody's holidays and, you know, to appreciate all of the cultures that make us who we are as a people. So celebrate it celebrated throughout the year. Robin, yes, Pease, throughout the year. thank you. Thank you so much for being here and sharing some of your perspectives. Good to see you. Good to see you. Be well. Thank you.